Hello, welcome to Travelzilla. Make sure to follow us on social media. Previously on Travelzilla, we've introduced the incredible city of Istanbul. Had a once in a lifetime experience dining like a sultan at the Siragan Palace to celebrate New Year's Eve. Smoke the shisha on the Asian side of the city. Explore the grounds and the harem of Top Kapi Palace. We've shown you the myriad of things to do on Istiklal Avenue, day and night. We've shown you our favorite places to eat baklava, such as Hafiz Mustafa, Mado, and Shigdem, where we ordered giants, thinking they were mini portions. Check it out. We were hypnotized by the intricate designs of the Blue Mosque and mesmerized by the rich history of Hagia Sophia. We had a blast at the city's Grand Bazaar and other bazaars such as the Spice Bazaar. We've acquired superpowers to keep exploring Istanbul and take you to the secret beauty of the Basilica Cistern and even got involved in an intergalactic space battle at the Mashka Teleferic. Is there anything left for us to do? Yes, of course! Let's go on a Bosphorus tour and explore the historic sites of the Bosphorus. Get ready and let's go! From there, we decided to walk to the famous Galata Bridge, crowded with fishermen from whom you can buy fresh fish if you wish to. We couldn't cook at the Conrad Hotel, but if I could, I would get me some fresh fish, I promise you. I find it really, really interesting that in a city of 15 million people, a megalopolis, you'd find a bridge just like this. It feels like I'm in the countryside somewhere. It's so calm and peaceful. We crossed the Galata Bridge until we finally reached the medieval surroundings of the world-famous Galata Tower. Vai subir não? Costa do depoimento. Oi? Costa do depoimento? Você que vai cagar. Você tá velho, hein? Você tá velho? The tower used to be called Tower of Christ and it was built by the Genoese community in 1348. It used to be the tallest building in Istanbul at 66.9 meters tall or 219 and a half feet tall and the walls are 3.75 meters thick. There's a restaurant and a cafe on top with great views of the city as well as a nightclub that presents Turkish shows. Come along and I'm going to show you what it looks like at night as well.
place is incredible. The energy here is unseen before. The next day we decided to go on a cruise of the Bosphorus. Since we stayed at the Conrad Hotel in Besiktas, we decided to take the boat from there. But before we went, we had some amazing street food, one of the best sandwiches ever. Just under a dollar. Check this out. Mm. The Bosphorus tour ferry sails north of Istanbul up the Bosphorus Strait from the Sea of Marmara to the Black Sea and then back again. There are several types of cruises and prices may vary from $30 to $65 depending on the type of cruise you get. Some of them include meals and whatnot, so it really, really depends. Come with me and I'm going to show you what the boat looks like. I to <laughs> On your boss first tour, you're gonna see some of Istanbul's main attractions. What I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna show you each one of them individually, okay? The first one I'm gonna show you is the Domabace Palace. The Domabace Palace is located on the European coastline at an area called Besiktas. It served as the administrative center of the Ottoman Empire from 1856 to 1887 and from 1909 to 1922. In the 18th century, the area became an imperial garden, much appreciated by the Ottoman sultans. É o Domabace Palace, Palácio Domabace, que era o Palácio dos Sultões aqui. The word Domabace means filled in garden. Doma meaning filled in and bache meaning garden. So we're inside now of the Doma Bache Palace. It's amazing. It's incredible. They have a harem here as well, which I can't wait to see. The palace was home to six sultans from 1856 to 1924 when it became the property of the national heritage of the new Turkish Republic. Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, the founder of the Republic, used the palace as a presidential residence during summers and enacted some of his most important works here. His room and the bed where he died are some of the palace's main attractions today. Wow, this is amazing. Turkey is such an incredible place. I'm in love with this place, you know, it grabs you. Domabachi is the largest palace in Turkey with an area of 40,000 square meters or 11.1 acres, 285 rooms, 
46 halls and 68 toilets. The design is eclectic, containing elements from Baroque, Neoclassical and Ottoman architecture. Unfortunately, you're not able to take pictures nor film inside, but it's a lot like Versailles or Schönbrunn Palace in many ways, although with a Turkish twist. Let's go back to our Bosphorus tour, shall we? Let's go! During most of the Bosphorus cruise tours, you can get off at any of the stops and get on the next boat with the same ticket. Make sure your tour does that before you leave the boat, okay? During the tour, you'll be able to see palaces such as the Domabachi, the Siragan and the Beylerbeye Palace. You'll also have the opportunity to enjoy great views of many charming homes, fortresses and the city's most spectacular bridges, the Fatih Sultan Mehmed Bridge, the Bosphorus Bridge and the brand new Yavul Sultan Selim Bridge, the tallest suspension bridge in the world with 332 meters or 1056 feet tall. The bridge comports 8 lanes and a train line, being one of the widest suspension bridges out there as well. It is located 5 kilometers or 3.1 miles north of the Bosphorus Bridge, almost at the edge of when the Bosphorus meets the Black Sea. I wish I had a few more days in Istanbul, there's so much more to do and see here. Before we travel to Rome, I decided to explore a very beautiful neighborhood called Ortakyoy. The neo-baroque style Ortakyoy Mosque is a beautifully ornate structure right on the jetty of the neighborhood, right by the Bosphorus waters and highly visible to the passing boats. The mosque was built in the 18th century, but the Balian family built its current neo-baroque building in the 1800s between 1854 and 56, ordered by Sultan Abdul Messid I. Now we're going to drink a coffee right here at the margin of the Bosphorus before we go to Roma. But I didn't want to be here, I didn't want to be here, I didn't want to leave here. I'm a little sad. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This has been one of the most cosmopolitan areas of the city since Ottoman times. It's a popular spot for locals with its art galleries and cafes. Definitely a place I want to go back to in summer months. Look at the ice on my jacket. Lovely face, this one. Snowy.
covered in snow in Turkey. Oh, coberta in neve. Check out the food here, it's simply amazing. This is a place for you to come back to in summer months and just have a feast, man. Wow. Well, time to go to Rome now. We either run or we're not gonna make it. Comida, comida, comida. Next on Travelzilla. We'll be talking about food on the 8th and last chapter of my series on Istanbul. It's a compilation of all the food we had in this amazing city. <laughs> Including the amazing Burma Kadaif we had at Mado, also famous for its cakes and ice cream for over two centuries. The best street sandwich ever. The best baklava in the world at Hafiz Mustafa, eating like a sultan on our New Year's Eve dinner at the Siragan Palace. Yep, and I had gold on my chocolate cake. Take that. Shigdim, a Turkish heaven when it comes to food. Except that when we looked at the menu, we thought the portions were mini. When it all arrived, surprise! Holy shit! <laughs> we'll show you when I had my first sahlep on my way to Asia and got some cinnamon stuck on my teeth. Nice smile! My first experience getting ice cream, Turkish style, on Istiklal <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> that and so much more to come. Hey. Don't forget to leave a comment, drop a like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for your time. See you on chapter 8. Goodbye guys.